Hey guys, I'm Jen and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I am Jen. I am a woman in long-term recovery. I'm also a Kark, a Serpa, and an Arcan trainer. If you are not new here, welcome back. So if you look in my description box down below, you'll find a link to my merchandise, my Patreon, my Amazon wish list, which has been updated. I use my Amazon wish list to help people in my local area who either came home from incarceration, rehab, or having a hard time, homeless, things of that nature. So you guys like my new little microphone. So I'm trying to keep it straight. I'm not sure if like interference plays a part or whatnot. So bear with me on this new uh, piece of equipment. Anyway, today I thought I would share with you guys something that I'm currently going through. So how to get off parole, right? That's like the big question for Jared and I. Everybody is sending us like positive thoughts and bated breath and all that stuff. Well, Jared has 13 days till he finds out and I have about a month and a half till I find out. I have countless letters. I'm actually looking at my coffee table right now. I have countless letters from friends, coworkers, um, clients, people who support me, writing to say how I deserve my merit date, that I've earned it, that it should be something that is given to me, that parole is actually at this point hindering my productivity as a community member. And it truly is because, oh, sorry guys, I kicked the camera. Because as you all know, I have been offered several jobs and had to have refused them because parole says, no, 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 you can't do that. Um, I've been offered to work with homeless people. I've been offered to work in rehabs. I've been offered just a multitude of jobs that parole keeps shooting down. I'm not allowed to do that, not allowed to do this, not allowed to do that. So it comes to a point where it's like, okay, I did my crime, I did my time, and I did my aftercare plan, if you will, which is community supervision, parole, for an extended period of time. It's been a year and a half. At this point, I'm really not going, there's, there is nowhere for me to go. There's no up from here. So what a lot of people don't know is in New York State, we use an app called JPEG. JPay, you can look up inmates while they're incarcerated and do like emails with them. You can send them money for commissary. You can do like um, pictures back and forth. If you pay extra, you can do video chats. You can purchase a tablet for your inmate. But once you get out, you also pay your supervision fees that way. So in New York State, you actually have to pay to be on parole. So not only did you pay with your freedom and your mental health and your mental well-being and the separation of your family and losing all of your belongings and just going through the shittiest time in your life, you also then have to pay to stay on supervision. So for me, because I've been gainfully employed, which you think would be a positive, since 48 hours out of incarceration, I have to pay $30 a month. If you are employed part-time, it is 15. Those are the only two options. And I know $30 a month doesn't seem like a lot, but to be quite honest, when you forget, like I did, like Jared did, because no one reminds you, no one says anything to you, no one says like, hey, do this, do that, you know? You literally get told, one time my parole officer brought it up to me, a year and a half ago, she was like, oh, you're gonna have to pay $30. And looking back on it, now I remember, but I didn't remember until mm, this week. So now, Jared and I owe $520 a piece. We have paid a substantial amount on it, but unless we pay the rest of that, we won't be considered for merit. So there's that fun little tidbit. Um, so to get off parole, uh, you need to have certain criteria met. You need to have completed all your programs, which I was not given any. So I don't have that component to give me a positive strike which Jared does. He was required to complete anger management. Last time they denied him because he did not complete anger management. Anger management is a six month program. He was two classes short and that's because they shut the program because of COVID. So this time around, Jared went and paid privately 
to make sure that he completed that. Jared had a complete drug and alcohol, which he did successfully. He got a certificate. When I went to go speak with my drug and alcohol person, she said, like, which is our outpatient. And at the time she said, well, I really don't feel like you need to come here. You work in the field, you have a sponsor, you go to meetings, you sponsor people, you are a recovery coach. Like, I consider you like a coworker. I actually have some ladies I would like to refer to you. So I had no programs to complete because I was deemed not in need. You know, insurance only wants to pay for something if you need it. So that's another strike against me for meeting the criteria to get my merit date. Since parole has denied in the last three months all the job offers that I've gotten, except for the waitressing that I do here a couple of days a week, which I make new monies, um, so I'm not gainfully employed in their eyes, you know? Um, I don't know. It's a crapshoot, guys. You know, the things that we have to do to get off parole in New York State, borderline on absurd. Um, the mental anguish that I go through due to being on parole is crazy. Like, it's crazy. I cry more days than I don't. And it's all because of the fear I have of being on parole. The fear I have of, God forbid, crossing the street the wrong way. And I know that sounds dramatic, but literally that's what it's like. This person has my life in their hand and at any point in time, you know, I'll never give her a dirty urine. I'll never be out after curfew. I'll never miss, like there's certain things I will never ever have a fear of doing, but that doesn't mean she won't misinterpret something and lock me up. I mean, it's been a year and a half. Treat people accordingly, right? If I'm an asshole, treat me like one by all means. But if I'm doing the right thing, supporting my child, paying my bills, everything is fine. Like, cut me some slack, right? So I was just told the other day, make sure all your fines are paid, make sure all of your supervision is paid, and then you'll have a better possibility. If those two criteria are not met, don't count on it. So now, here we are. Jared's 13 days and I'm 24, 34, 35, 6, 37 days out. I have submitted about seven letters of reference to be removed from parole. I have continued to see my therapist the entire time, which was one of my only requirements because I have to be, I have to be in some sort of programming, she told me. So I have to pay $80 a month to talk to her. Um, and on top of it, you know, now I have to pay these supervision fees. And all of this is literally a crapshoot. It's like throwing the dice. Hopefully, the stars will align, the universe will be in the right place at the right time, and they'll be like, Jennifer Cutting, free. But who knows? You know, I had a couple of letters sent in for Jared, you know. Um, he's paid an exorbitant amount on his fines uh, because he had a burglary charge, and all his other co-defendants, you know, jump ship and they haven't paid anything so he just keeps paying on it because he's afraid if no monies go towards it he's gonna get in trouble for it so he has probably paid close to two grand on it um you know wish us luck guys whatever you pray to whoever you believe in please i beg of you put some goodness out into the universe for him and i you know, November 30th is his date and December 24th is mine. And I just, you know, I get it. What we did was wrong. We committed crimes, 100%. I am not the type of person that says, hey, you should commit a crime and not have any type of repercussions for it at all. But I also believe, and I, and I have to believe this, because if I don't, I won't look at the world the same way. As human beings, we have the amazing ability to, to change. You know, the power of change is tremendous, and we own that. And Jared and I are living proof of that. We have changed drastically in our lives, 
And at this point, parole has done all it possibly can do for us in a positive light. I mean, if it was positive at all. <laughs> and this is why I, I, I truly believe that not only do our prisons need to be reformed, so do parole and probation. We have such a breakdown on such a foundational level. It, it's just... Uh, I feel like the parole officers and and probation officers here that service this county absolutely have compassion fatigue. Um, Compassion fatigue is when you just, you lose your ability to have empathy and understanding of the clientele and population that you're working with because you just become jaded. And that that literally is what is happening around here. Um, We have people that have been in the same position for far, far too long and they don't have any continuing education. So I know for me, for me to keep my own certifications, I have to do 10 hours of continuing education every three so I have to do 30 hours I do 10 hours a 10 hours a year every year for three years and that gives me my 30 hours every three years you know probation and parole they do like gun training they don't go into a classroom. They don't learn about cognitive behavioral therapy. They don't learn about, you know, harm reduction. They don't learn about new forms of mat. They don't learn about any of that. And that has an absolute direct effect on us. And by us, I mean my population, the felons, the addicts, the hopeless, the, you know, they'll never recover. <laughs> but here we are. So... I just want to tell you guys, thank you very much for supporting me and being there for me. I don't know what I would do without this channel. You guys have become so important to me and in my life. And if, as always, guys, if you need me, reach out. I'm just a message away. And I will see you all in a few days. Take care. Bye.